Good evening, folks. This is Bill Breeden, and thank you for joining me for Constellation Tour number 44. Tonight we're going to talk about Canis Minor, or the Lesser Dog. And this is going to be a pretty short one, because there's not a whole lot within the boundaries of Canis Minor. So I'll start off by telling you how I have Stellarium set up here. Um, I have it set up for February the 10th of 2021 at about 9.30 p.m. And I have it set up for suburban skies with a naked eye field of view. So this should simulate what you see when you look up at night from an average um, suburban backyard. Looking due south um, in the wintertime. So let's, let's talk a little bit about how to find Canis Minor, okay? Winter months, look south, look for the constellation Orion. Orion is your signpost to the winter sky. Find the top two stars, Betelgeuse and Bellatrix, and follow them in this direction. And the first bright star that you come to should be Procyon. And Procyon is also known as Alpha Canis Minoris. In other words, the Alpha star of the constellation Canis Minor. So that's how you find Canis Minor. And here are the constellation lines. And you'll see it's depicted just as a connecting line between two stars. Alpha Canis Minoris and Beta Canis Minoris. So as far as stars that you can see with the unaided eye, there's really only two that are going to stand out for Canis Minor. And here are the boundaries for the constellation. It's a very small one here. here are the, uh, here's the outline for it. So anything within this boundary is in the constellation Canis Minor. So let's have a look at the mythical figures. And you can see that Canis Minor is depicted as a small dog just above Monoceros the Unicorn. And here's the, here's the greater dog down here, Canis Major. So we're looking at the minor one, we're looking at the lesser one. So you want to explore Canis Minor. Well, I have no notable double stars on my list, and I have no notable deep sky objects on my list. So are we kind of stuck with nothing? Maybe, but probably not. There's always something to see. So let's put our boundaries back up, and let's, let's have a look through our, our finder scope, and let's see if we see anything interesting in this part of the sky. By just panning around. Let's start with Procyon itself. Um, it's listed here in Stellarium as a double star. So let's have a closer look at it and see if it splits. Probably doesn't easily because I don't have it listed as an astronomical league double star. So it must be a very tight double. Procyon is listed with a magnitude of 0.4 making it one of the night sky's brightest stars, and it's located just 11 and a half light years away. So what about Beta Canis Minoris? If we take a closer look at that. Sure, let's look at that through the finder. Uh, this one's located uh, let me see here. Distance 161 light years away, shining at third magnitude. It's listed as a variable star, which means its brightness varies over a length of time. Doesn't look like it splits easily. So this might be when you want to use your star chart 
to find some deep sky objects that are interesting. So let's turn on our labels and markers and see if anything pops up in Canis Minor that would be interesting. No, not really. This is actually a pretty empty area of the sky. Looks like we have one. Oh, here we go. We get a little closer. We can see some some objects pop up. Well, it looks like we have we have some galaxies here, but they're only yeah they're not actually in the database. They're just plotted on the star chart, so we're not going to get much information about them. So here, let's return our view back to normal. There we go. Okay, well with no, no deep sky objects and no notable level stars, uh, this will conclude my tour tonight of Canis Minor. Good night and good seeing.